Here's Brody Brazil. I have to tell you, I am not making this video at all in suggestive fashion. I'm not promising you that history or baseball are going to repeat themselves once again, but I am completely fascinated with the last time that they denied a team to relocate. It's crazy, right? Look at that logo. This is from the early 90s. The San Francisco Giants were literally out the door. Tampa was that close to getting their baseball team after so many tries. As you'll see, they had it all ready. They had a stadium. They had jerseys mocked up. They had 30,000 people signed up for season tickets. And still, it wasn't just baseball. It was the National League voted no that the Giants could not move. And there's not a lot of coverage from this back in the day. For whatever reason, I just can't find a lot of news stories and opinions. There are some things in print, but not in video format or fashion. So this comes to us from the CBS News program, 60 Minutes, back in 1992. It's titled Field of Dreams. And again, watch how ready Tampa was here. You can fit the Astrodome or the Metrodome or any other dome facility underneath the crown of this structure. It's called the Florida Suncoast Dome, $140 million worth of concrete and Teflon, financed by local taxpayers. And as St. Petersburg Assistant City Manager Rick Dodge is happy to tell you, it has 43,000 seats, 50 luxury boxes, one hydraulically operated pitcher's mound. It has everything but a team. Which is crazy, right? In modern days, it's all about you know building a stadium and funding and financing that first. Like Tampa already had the spot. <laughs> They're ready. They are so turnkey for this to happen. This had tremendous momentum. And for as much as everybody talks about, well, the Giants almost moved. Remember a little, a little bit better than that. There were a couple teams in line here. Watch this. The Chicago White Sox nearly came. They wanted a new stadium, and they told the Illinois legislature if they didn't get one, they were moving to Tampa Bay. Hmm. They nearly got the Florida Marlins, one of the new National League expansion teams. Tampa Bay was one of the finalists. But Major League Baseball awarded a Florida franchise to downstate rival Miami instead. The Mariners were this close to coming. They were going broke in Seattle and on their way to Tampa Bay when a local corporation with a yen for baseball stepped in at the last minute and saved the team for Seattle. But it was the San Francisco Giants that finally drove the people of Tampa Bay over the edge. The Giants were losing $10 million a year playing in foggy, frigid Candlestick Park. And four times the voters of San Francisco refused to build them a new stadium. So Giant owner Bob Lurie decided to sell the team to a Tampa Bay group. They not only shook hands on the deal, they signed a written contract. This time it seemed nothing could go wrong. 30,000 people reserved season tickets and a new poster was printed. Thumbs up. Looking good. It was sort of like after uh, VE Day. I mean, there were celebrations and happiness. I've never seen a community respond in such a way, only to be subsequently terribly disappointed and dejected for the third or fourth time. While Vince Namoli, the man who thought he'd bought the Giants for Tampa Bay, was working with Major League Baseball on the design of the team's uniforms, a group of baseball owners was working behind the scenes to keep the team in San Francisco. Have you ever been involved in a business like baseball? It's the first time I have ever seen anything sold to the lowest bidder. What Vince Namoli what means is that in a maneuver that could only happen in baseball, major league owners blocked the move and forced the sale of the Giants to a San Francisco group for $15 million less than the Tampa Bay offer. I said before that they had a stadium, they had the season ticket commitments, they had a lot of things going. They also literally had a written purchase agreement, Tampa did, to acquire the Giants. Like, how much more complete do you need? Signed, sealed, and delivered? It was signed and sealed. It just wasn't delivered. Now, again, full disclosure. we got to pump the brakes for a second. If you're an A's fan or you're somebody from Las Vegas, the whole point of this is just to look back at how this played out one time before. And especially considering the Bay Area connections. I know there's a lot of people who watch the A's and Giants or at least understand the backstories of both franchises. So a lot of you are old enough to remember this. Some of you aren't. And this is mostly for just kind of educational purposes. It's crazy, right? The reporter there also mentioned the Giants' claims that they were losing $10 million a year. 
We've recently heard the A's claims that they're losing $40 million a year. And that's why a move needs to happen. Now, history repeats itself in a lot of different ways here because over all the decades and here in the early 90s, we heard about antitrust with baseball, their exemption, and how it it could be challenged here and now again, but it was challenged even back then too. In many ways, Major League Baseball is above the law. The 28 owners who control it don't have to follow the same rules that other American businesses do when it comes to competition. It's the owners who decide how much baseball there will be, how many teams, what cities will get them, who can own them. If you try that in any other industry, you'd be hauled into court for violating federal antitrust laws. However, thanks to Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes in a 1922 Supreme Court decision, baseball hasn't had to obey the antitrust rules. According to Justice Holmes, baseball's not a business. To say it's not a business is just plain bull. Connie Mack has one of the best-known names in baseball history. His grandfather was the legendary manager and owner of the Philadelphia Athletics. That guy. But Connie Mack III is baseball's worst nightmare. He's a United States senator from Florida and is bent on taking Tampa Bay's revenge to the halls of the U.S. Congress. He's co-sponsoring a bill to end baseball's antitrust exemption. Well, obviously, it did not succeed in the way Connie Mack III was aiming because it, it still exists. But again, here in 2023, it has been questioned whether it will ever change or whether it will ever make a difference in this process. Who knows? Now, ultimately, Bud Selig wasn't part of denying this relocation. Faye Vincent was the commissioner back then. But Bud Selig, as owner of the Brewers who had been relocated from Seattle, he was part of this coverage here. There is no plot. This is just the way this game has been operated. The way the game operates, Seelig says, is that decisions are always made in the best interests of baseball. This time, the owners didn't steal the team from St. Petersburg. They saved the team for San Francisco. That day, I got hundreds of letters from kids in Northern California and their parents who had grown up with Willie Mays and Willie McCovey and Orlando Cepeda and Juan Marichal. And whose hearts were breaking because the Giants were leaving. I don't believe for a minute the general tone in baseball was because of some romantic belief that they wanted to protect the industry of baseball for those little kids in San Francisco. I mean, I believe the Oakland Athletics play about six miles away from there, so it's not like the area would be devoid of that baseball experience. And how about all the kids in this marketplace who don't have the opportunity to go six miles and see baseball? It's a business decision. We believe our greatest obligation is to try to keep a team in its local market. I can't rewind that right now, but I'd love to play that last part all over again. Their biggest obligation to keep a team in its local market. And that's the headline I put there at the bottom. The business side of this versus doing what's right. And ultimately, I think think they accomplished both parts. The Giants are pretty darn successful in San Francisco, and they kept a team from relocating. This is the headline from the New York Times. Now, all of this was happening in the the summer of 92, and I think this story was probably from even later than that, looking back on it. uh, I don't know when this was broadcast, but this from the New York Times, Wednesday, November 11th, 1992, look what the wind blew back. Baseball's Giants. The Tampa Bay bid is rejected. The team will stay put in San Francisco. It was a 9-4 vote against relocation. They needed 10, um, 10, 10 yes votes, I think. They got four. And in the the article here, I'll just read it. National League club owners today soundly rejected a move of the San Francisco Giants to St. Petersburg, handing the Tampa Bay area its seventh setback in seven attempts to attract a major league baseball team. The owners, which is which is also, by the way, the craziest thing, like Tampa Bay now is in the midst of of potentially relocating to Orlando or there's the Tampa St. Pete thing. It, it Mind-blowing. They finally got it, and now look where they're at again. The owners, in a secret ballot that required 10 votes for approval, voted 9-4 against, allowing Bob Lurie, the Giants owner, to sell the team for $115 million to the Tampa Bay group, which would have moved the Giants to the Florida Suncoast Dome in time for next season. So there you go. 
you could probably check out this article. I mean, you could freeze frame this now and read it if you want, but um, it's interesting. And this, this process was so much more condensed. It literally popped up in the summer. It was done by November. Nope, you're not going. But they tried to move literally within that off season because the Suncoast Dome at that point was ready. So that happened. I'm not saying it happens again, but it came down to the owners of just the National League. Now it's a league-wide vote, American and National League team. And there, there's a committee. There's a lot more to it. I'm not sure that that makes the process any more difficult or any easier, to be honest with you. But this never happened. It was projected, and it never happened. You made it here to the end of the video. You know I appreciate that. Thumbs up down below. And don't forget, subscribe to this channel so I can definitely see you back here next time.